Good evening, everybody. I'm going to give it a couple minutes here for a few people to log on and start listening. But my name is Kelsey Florick. I own Caring Transitions. My company helps people downsize, relocate, and liquidate. So often we're working with older adults or individuals and their families who are making the decision to relocate from a home into a condo or a condo into apartment or any of those living situations into senior living. And what we do is um, we help them figure out a plan to manage the, the logistics and the stress of the process. So we help them um, relocate. We help them figure out a space plan and a floor plan so we know what furniture they're bringing and where it's going to go. We'll help them with packing. We'll help them with the move, unpacking, getting them resettled, pictures hung, all of that um, completely decorated and set up for them. And then we also figure out a plan for what happens with the items that they can't bring with them. So we do estate sales, online auctions, donation coordination, clear outs, um, recycling, hazmat disposal, paper shredding. We kind of cover the gamut of what they need to get them set up at their new place and also get their old living space cleared out in case they need to get that on the market. Um, so tonight we're going to talk through, at least I'm going to talk through some tips on if people are working on organizing or decluttering in their home right now while they're um, kind of quarantined and, and stuck there. <laughs> um, my company has been sort of temporarily closed. We're looking at projects on a case-by-case -case basis um, and helping where we can. But um, this is definitely something that people can get started on if they're planning on potentially downsizing at some point in the near future, or if a loved one or a family member um, might need to do that themselves. Um, so I want to talk through some of that. And then after that, uh, we're going to bring on Valerie McBain with Century 21 Stackmar, who's going to talk through some of the logistics of selling a home if someone is thinking of leaving their home um, and kind of how that's impacted right now with everything going on with COVID-19. I want to just give me one second here. I want to try and pull Valerie in right now. Oh, hey, Valerie, you're on as Navigate Home, and I think you need to be on as yourself. Does that make sense? Like Valerie McBain? Okay. <laughs> so while Valerie's doing that, I'm going to get started on some of the tips. I have seen a lot of posts from people that are being very proactive during their quarantine and they're cleaning out their homes and organizing and really making decisions about what they do or don't need in the house. Um, hats off to you if that's something that you're doing. That's amazing. Not everyone is quite as proactive. Um, but I always, you know, tell my clients that it's never too early to get started, even if you don't really have a plan for where you're going or um, when you want to move, you might know or have some sort of idea that maybe you'll be downsizing to a one bedroom or two bedrooms. So just even knowing that you can kind of start to wrap your mind around what you might not need um, and kind of start to work through some areas of your home. So it's never a bad thing to start early. Um, if you can, not everyone has the luxury to do that. Some people are moving because they have sort of a last minute urgent thing that may have happened to them. Hey guys, hi everyone that's, that's come in. So in those situations, we're still able to work through with our clients. We just come in and we're a little bit more hands-on with helping them make those decisions and kind of coordinating things for them. But I do see clients feel a little bit more comfortable and more in control of the process if they've already started making those decisions earlier. Um, one other thing that we tell people is don't feel like you need to do everything overnight or in a week or in a month. Um, we really kind of encourage people to look at 
decluttering and organizing as sort of a, you know, small steps, take baby steps type process. So you can set more realistic, more attainable goals. Um, like maybe one day you're working on a closet in a guest bedroom or the whole bedroom itself. Um, or you give yourself two days to do that. Whatever you think, you know, the pace that you can work at, you want to make sure that that's something that you're being realistic about. Um, and then you kind of work from there. So once you get momentum in one room, then you might be excited to start on another room. Hold on, we have a question I want to read really quick. I heard that some of the facilities are moving people in. Okay, um, how can caring transitions help? So um, we definitely help people relocate. Um, we've, you know, as I mentioned, we're kind of looking at it on a case by case basis right now, just to make sure our team and our clients are safe. I know that some senior communities are accepting new residents. Some are not. Um, Kim Russell spoke, I believe it was last week, and she is a very good resource. Um, if you're looking for more information on that, um, with next steps for seniors, but um, my team, my company does help people with the relocation process. So we help them figure out what furniture to bring, what smaller items to bring. We help them pack. We help them move. We get them unpacked, resettled. So we kind of walk them completely through that process. Um, so that is something that we do right now. It's not as straightforward. It's a little bit more tricky. But if anyone has that kind of need, um, they can always reach out to us and we can talk more about it. All right, so getting back to some tips here, um, one thing I always tell people too is a great place to get started in their home is anything that's behind closed doors. So what I mean by that is like closets, attics, basements, garages, um, those are the areas that tend to accumulate a lot of things. I know that's where all the accumulation is in our home. So um, if you start in those areas, you're really going to make a big impact um, more than you realize because you're probably not frequently even looking in those areas. And what that means is that you're probably not using what's in there very often. So it kind of makes it easier in terms of making those decisions. Um, I always tell people too, you want to get a full picture and idea of what you have because you could have things scattered throughout the home. So say if you're looking at coffee makers that you want to bring with you, you want to kind of take inventory and know, have you covered the gamut of all of those types of appliances in your house? Are you factoring in the two that you have in the basement? Are you factoring in the three that you have in the kitchen? You need to kind of put all of those items together so you can really get an idea of, okay, here's what I'm using. Why do I have so many coffee makers? And then just go from there because you might, you know, catch it in the basement and not realize you've got three more upstairs. So it's just kind of pooling those items together as well. Obviously, it's also asking yourself the tough questions like, do I really need this? When's the last time I used it? Um, how many of those items do I have? Uh, how many times have I used it? Maybe you have something that you've used five times in 40 years. You know, it's a pretty safe bet that you probably don't need to take it with you if you're moving, if that's the case. Um, so it's just being able to have those tough conversations with yourself and be realistic about how often you use it and if it's something that you think you need. Um, we always encourage our clients to pull, pull together anything that they're planning to give to family members um, or friends or, you know, acquaintances um, for whatever reason. And we encourage people to do that now instead of waiting until maybe they've passed away because for a couple of reasons, A, it gets it out of the house and it gets it into the hands of who you truly want to have it. So there's no risk of it not getting to them. And then also it gives you the opportunity to explain to that person why it's important for them to have that, why that means something to them, what um, what memories it sparks for, you know, for you and, and for the family. So it's just a good thing to kind of get that done earlier. Obviously, um, when you're talking about repurposing items, that's huge. We definitely really, really encourage our clients um, to donate and repurpose as much as possible. Now, whether that's selling or donating, like I mentioned, or recycling, um, that's definitely always a priority. And I know that everyone, my team, my clients feels a lot better when we found a good home and a good purpose for something. 
Now, when you're talking about donating right now, again, it's tough because of everything going on with COVID-19. So unfortunately, a lot of donation centers are not open like they usually are. However, um, I did find one locally that has a few different locations. That's Gray Centers of Hope. And they have a location in Warren, Oak Park, Sterling Heights, and Pontiac. So they're in Oakland and Macomb. And they tend to take most of the items that you bring them. So they're really good about taking whatever donations that you can. So that's an option for some people right now. The other option, unfortunately, is just, you know, boxing or bagging things up and holding on to them or storing them somewhere in their home until the donation centers start to open back up again. Now, people are tend to have a tough time <laughs> going through their things. There's a lot of emotional attachment. Everything um, really is a memory um, to the person that owns those items. So there can to, tend to be a lot of grief, um, regret, and stress throughout the process. So what we always tell our clients is that that's completely normal and that's expected. Um, and that's something that they should just, you know, prepare themselves for and give themselves the grace to feel that way, but not to let it hold you back in the process. Um, a lot of times we'll talk through and refocus by talking about what's going to be exciting about making this type of move or this type of downsize. Um, are they moving closer to family? Will they get to see grandkids more? Are they going to be around more people and be able to socialize more? So it's kind of just using those positive reinforcements to really stay focused and keep moving um, throughout the process. Now, if people really, really have a tough time letting things go, then there's some, you know, tips and tricks that they can use. One is creating rules of elimination. So what that means is we might pick a time frame, maybe 90 days, maybe six months. And um, what we do with that timeline is we'll look at, have you used that item in the last 90 days or six months? And if you haven't, then that's a pretty you know safe bet that you're not going to be meeting that where you go. Um, if you have, then, you know, how many times have you used it? Do you feel like you really needed it? Were you just doing it because you wanted to avoid having to get rid of it? So it's just, again, asking yourself those questions. Um, there's another trick that a lot of organizers use that's pretty similar, and it's actually boxing things up and putting a date on that box and then setting a timeline to circle back to that box. Maybe it's six months, maybe it's a year. Um, but you put it in your calendar, you set a reminder, and then you go back to the box and then you work through it and see what have you actually used or pulled out of the box. And you're making notes anytime you do on the box with the dates and things like that. So it's pretty transparent. But a lot of times, of course, people haven't even touched it um, and they've probably forgotten that they even had it. So it really kind of helps build an extra layer into the process for people that are uncertain, but then they get a clear picture of if they really need it or if they're using it. Um, okay, so those are a few of my tips. Um, I have a full downsizing presentation that I like to, um, you know, present throughout the community at local senior um, centers and senior communities. If anyone wants a copy of that presentation, I'm happy to email it over. There's lots of good information in there on, you know, kind of the challenges that people face and more of the tips that we have to overcome some of those challenges and even just reasons that um, someone may be considering downsizing. So, I will comment my email address in the comment box if anyone wants a copy of that or if anyone um, would like to talk more with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to touch base with Valerie today. Um, she wasn't able to lock back in as herself, meaning I couldn't add her to um, the live video to chat with us. So that just means she'll have to schedule another live herself another day where she can talk in a little bit more detail about selling the home and how um, the real estate market's being impacted right now, things to think about, her tips, those sorts of things. So sorry you couldn't make it, Valerie. Hopefully I uh, held down the fort over here <laughs> and gave people some good um, tips and tricks. 
either way, y'all got me out of my bed and I did my hair and shower today. So I appreciate the motivation <laughs> to actually be functional. So I hope everyone is staying safe um, and getting some downtime and just embracing what's nice about, um, you know, everything going on with the, the quarantine right now. I know it's a tough and tricky time, but try and stay focused on the positive and, and do what you can when you're feeling productive. Um, all right. Hope everyone has a good evening. Thank you so much for attending. I'm going to comment my email really quick and then I'm going to log off. Have a good night, everyone.